Hey, I'm Matt Ducker, the restaurant editor at Epicurious, and I'm here in downtown New York in the Geary Building with Adam Goldberg, an amazing uh, photo blogger, social media maven, and coffee expert who runs the blog A Life Worth Eating. If you don't know him, this is the man you need to follow online about all things eating and drinking around the world, really. But tell us a little bit about the blog, how it got started. And, yeah. So um, I lived in Paris for a few years after I graduated college. And I just sort of started eating my way around. And I brought my camera into these restaurants where people were kind of afraid to take pictures. Started uploading them and yeah, very slowly uh, started getting a lot of traction. I think people were seeing inside the restaurants that maybe normally weren't being published online. And um, lived in Mexico for a few years and just drank a whole lot of coffee. I mean, you know, like we we put up a series online, Epic Curiosity, which is kind of going behind the scenes of some of our favorite restaurants, uh, you know, bars, uh, producers, and we did an episode of coffee, and these guys came to us and wanted us to do something to to help promote the series online, to talk about coffee, and like I immediately came to you. I mean, I think when people think about making coffee at home, you know, they have a coffee maker, like something, you know, something simple. You know, in the last few years, people have started to experiment with Chemex, with French press, with V60, with all these different, with all these different modes. It's a little, a little confusing, but but how do you kind of break it down? I mean, you have like a ton of equipment behind us here, yeah, um, and you've clearly become an expert on this sort of thing. But um, I mean, I think there are a lot of different ways to extract coffee. It really depends on what you're looking for, how much time you have, how much body you want in the coffee. Um, some of the coffee methods of extraction have filters, other ones don't. Um, some are a bit gritty, some are super refined. Um, you can really have all sorts of fun with different methods of extraction. I think today we're going to be doing French press, uh, Chemex, and V60, which on the spectrum of extraction is sort of like this really kind of rustic, um, full-bodied way of extraction. And that's French press. That's French press, yeah, because there's no filter, so you get a lot of the residual grind in the bottom. Yeah. Um, Which is also, French press is probably the one that everyone actually already has at home. Most, most, people, most people have a French press. Like my, my mom, like she's probably watching, has a French press at home. I mean, it's one of my favorite methods because, I mean, you can buy like a steel French press and pop it in your suitcase and travel with it. It's pretty forgiving. Um, the grind size is coarser, which means that you don't need as fancy of a grinder to do it. Um, and it just tastes great. So we're going to go through those three different brewing methods. We're going to start with French press. What do we need for French press? Um, you need a grinder. Right. Call it up here. Which we have here. OK. Um, this time machine looking device, <laughs> which is the French press. Um, boiling water at about 205 degrees. And I mean, technically, you don't have to brine to grind the coffee to order, you could have a pre-ground. But after coffee is ground, it really only lasts about five minutes, so it's much better to put it on. So yeah, unless you're running straight home from your coffee store. That'll be a really good test. Right. Yeah. But I mean, like, the one thing about, before we get into French press, that you know I always have heard over the years, like coffee nerds seem kind of like anti-French press. Like the way, like it, it's, it just seems like it's like not the, it's not the, you don't see French presses in in like behind your like cool coffee bars in New York yeah. that often. I think maybe maybe it's starting to happen more now, but there seems like there's kind of a stigma against it. I mean, is that just something I'm making up? Or? No, I mean I think most coffee eaters actually really like French press. There's been this movement towards coffee with higher acidity, um, higher citrus notes, and because of the full-bodied nature of French press, a lot of times those flavors get masked. Um, so people tend to prefer like filtered coffee, either V60 or Chemex which will take out some of the residual uh, ground. But French press is great. OK, well, let's, so let's, let's get started. Right. I'm going to switch places with you, because I'm not going to be doing any of this. For... Yeah, so yeah, when I make French press, like a good starting point is usually like 1 to 10 grams of the ratio should be 1 gram of beans to 10 grams of water. So today we'll use about 70 grams of beans to 700 grams of water. So you need a scale, right? I mean, like, yeah. you grams here. We need a scale. I mean, the, a kitchen scale, a lot of people probably already have one in their kitchen if they're if they're a serious or amateur. Kitchen product. scales are great. Yeah. Um, you just really shouldn't be doing it by volume. I see a lot of people asking, you know, should I how many cups to tablespoons? And the volume of coffee really just depends on the roasting, the grind size, how old it is. So it's just it's not a very accurate way of, of measuring that. Always use a scale. And any kitchen scales, you know, completely fine. Right. And so 70 grams we're starting with. Yeah. So let's let's do 70 grams of grind to 700 grams of water. So I'm okay. just going to flip on the grinder for a second. Right. So this is they probably 
that you can't hear over the red, but this is a fancy grinder that also weighs, and also has a scale of the filter to the red. Yeah, so this one, this grinder will automatically stop at the weight I drink. So I entered in 70 grams, and it's going to give me just about 70 grams of coffee. I have a pretty nice grinder at home, but it has like a dial on the side, and the whole thing kind of shakes like it's going to fall off the side of the. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, for this French press, you don't really need a fancy grinder. Um, you just want to make sure it's a burr grinder, where right. the beans are actually passing through the blade. Right. Um, it's really important that the grind size be consistent in terms of each like individual grain being of equal size and bread. Um, you kind of want so your your twenty dollar like blade grinder that you buy at at Bed Bath and Beyond. It's not gonna. We shouldn't be using that. If you want to commit to making serious coffee at home, buy a burr grinder. I mean, they start around thirty-five, forty dollars. Okay, not, not, not expensive. It's not that expensive. Um, and you want the grind size for French press to be fairly coarse, about kosher salt. Right. I mean, if you take a look here, right. you can actually see the individual. It's like kosher salt. Yeah, no, that's I'm sure it tastes different. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put in seventy grams of coffee. Shake it around. Not bad. Seventy. 70 grams. Right. So the scale works. Scale works. Oh, great. Please. Okay, so now I'm going to reset the scale and we're going to slowly pour in 700 grams of water. And what I do is I put in about 150 grams as I start my timer. And then I give it like a little stir. And then I put in the rest of the 700. Um, so total time, four minutes. Four minutes yeah. So I started the timer. We're going, I'm going for about 10 seconds right now. And this is a fancy stirring apparatus. Yeah, using otherwise known as a chopstick. Right, a chopstick. Okay, great. And then, so while that's going to sit for about a minute here, is that um, right? Well, I just, you know, you kind of want to make sure that all just stir it. Okay, gotcha. that everything's incorporated into the water. Um, so we're adding 700 grams of water total, but the first, I poured in 150 grams of water. Okay, I'm to stir, stir and then add the, the remaining the remaining of the 700. Got it. So now I'm just bringing this up to uh, so we're going to grams. Just, just to the seven, we're not going like all the way up no. to the top of the brim yet. No. Yeah, because if you if you fill it too much, and I mean this is a fairly large French press, right. um, as you're plunging it down, like, you can get some grind to the coffee. But it doesn't matter how large your French press is, the ratio. The ratio the one to ten is a pretty good starting yeah. point. So what I usually do is um, I put the top on. I don't actually make it. I don't let it have contact with the coffee, but that will help insulate it so that it stays at right as close to 205 degrees as possible. So for the next three and a half minutes, now we get to wait. Yeah. One thing I want to talk about is this kettle, though. The gooseneck kettle is isn't that, is that what they call that? That yeah, is. Yeah. It's um, a, so you know my tea kettle at my parents' house, they have the one that like it spurts all over the place yeah. because it's like boiling water and it's like not like direct flow of contact with the. The beans and it, that that is not good for honestly for coffee. French press you can basically use any kettle. Okay. Um, the gooseneck is not important because you're not really doing any kind of like a it's just all extraction. It's just all going down. It's just all going down, yeah. mixing together. You really don't even need a French press. I mean, I've done this before. I go out to uh, Colorado once in a while, and because of the high altitude, you need to adjust for pressure. So I've made French press in a pressure cooker. Wow. Um, as long as you're, you know. Letting it sit for those four minutes, you're getting your ratios right, and then you're filtering it out after, it's going to taste good. You're like the MacGyver of coffee. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, but I don't know. made it in pressure cooker coffee. Well, it's the other thing is, I mean, I've heard of for the first cup in the morning, I'm really forgetting the okay. coffee. Okay. Right? Like <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Get, you need to get the coffee. I mean, soon. if it comes down to it, I'll just eat it. Coffee. <laughs> coffee. coffee in the morning is uh, pretty important. And this is so. This is an electric kettle here, which is another option for people, especially if you yeah. have to be portable with it. It's like you know, like you don't need to be tied to your gas, so which is really right. I mean, the nice thing about this one is it'll actually you can set it for a specific temperature. Right. For the French press, I use about two hundred five degrees. Okay. If you don't have an electric kettle. Um, just boil the water over the stove to boiling. Take it off. Let it sit for about thirty seconds, and that'll bring it down to two hundred five. Yeah, that should be good. Cool. So we have about a minute left of our right. French press construction. Right, one minute. Um, okay. Uh, uh, so, and so beans we're using here. I mean, is, do you oh, yeah. use a, a specific type of beans when you're when you're making French press? Should you be looking for something that is like? I mean, you know, whatever you like. Um, yeah. It's important for me that the beans be freshly roasted. Right. Um, these some of my favorite beans are part of in Brooklyn. Um, these were roasted two days ago. Right. And you don't want to roast. You don't want to extract the coffee like as soon as it was roasted. Right. The golden window is like between three days and three days. Okay. So it should be just right. And you can actually see a lot of like the, the, the gas escaping from the beans because they're freshly roasted. Right. The fresher the beans, the more gas that sort of gets trapped in there. And as you're brewing, and you'll see it more with the Chemex and the B60. And as bubbles kind of come on, 
So would you say that this is the most, when you, you've said this is the most forgiving out of the three methods we're using. What, what exactly do you mean when you say that? I mean, I don't um, know you for people at home. Well, what I like about French press is I can just sort of put everything in and then walk away for those right. like four minutes of brewing. Whereas um, some of the other things we're doing, we really need to be watching it yeah. and watching time. Right. You have to yeah. be watching time. You have to make sure that, oh, so I'm sorry. So we're at four minutes. Sorry, I'm going to start plunging down. Um, you kind of know if your brine size is right if you're applying about 15 to 20 pounds of pressure like while you're pushing it down. Right. If you really have to force down the French press, like your brine size is too fine, you want to make it a bit coarser. If it goes down really quickly, um, then it's, it's too coarse. Yeah. And you also you don't want to let the French press sit in the coffee sit in the French press pot because it's, it's going to all those grounds. Yeah, it's going to continue brewing. So you want to like pour it out as soon as possible. And if it's you know just for one person, I usually pour it into a second cup. Okay. So, cheers. Cheers. First cup down. Yeah. You're having breakfast. <laughs> there we go. This is your breakfast for the day. I can't eat anything until I have my coffee. So do you do air do you air coffee like like wine? I'm not gonna do that now. But I mean, you can you can you can yeah. do all sorts of things to sort of get the flavors out of here. But the interesting thing about coffee is that as it cools, the temperature changes. A lot of the acidity and stuff. Um, Sort of gets enhanced. The flavor, the flavor changes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right now, I mean, this is probably about 195 degrees. Right. You, when it's like 175, it's like just that's optimal. optimal. Okay. So we should yeah. like come back to this in a few minutes. We'll come back. I mean, I'm gonna keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic. Good. No, and I mean, so what what do you, what are you tasting here? You were talking about um, you know, what, what you can expect from French press. And, yes. So I mean, what I like about French press is that it has that kind of heaviness that you don't get with some of the filtration methods because there's no paper filter that's sitting in the French press pot. I mean, right. it's literally just like a metal mesh strainer that's sort of getting yeah. passed through. Um, so you're not going to get as much acidity as you all get with some of the filter methods. Yeah. Um, but like, I mean, I, to me, like molasses just kind of like jumps out of this. Right. I mean, for me, you know, I, I love the the new wave of like lighter coffees that are citrusy and that are almost more floral notes, like almost more like tea sometimes, I feel like, you know, not quite that light, but but a lot of people when they get a cup of coffee they expect it to taste like this. Yeah. Um, um, so for those people at home like that, this is definitely the way to go. Um, cool. yeah for, for coffees that tend to be more like chocolatey, nutty tasting, a lower in acidity, I'll generally do in a French press just because like you said, like it's, it tastes really good like that. Um, Filtration, filter coffee is really good for higher acidity, brighter coffee. Right. Um, that has, like, you'll get more of the fruit notes and citrus stuff. So French press, start to finish, about six minutes total between the yeah. beans and the water. I mean, maybe even less if you, you know, prepare the grinder. If you weren't, like, having to, like, show, like, song and dance while you're doing it, maybe, maybe it could go I, a little bit. I mean, it's, it's pretty quick, but the, the nice thing is during the four minutes of brewing, you can do other things. You don't right. have to be sitting there pouring coffee or standing right. like we're going to be doing. Really right. Checking your Instagram and yeah, exactly. and see, see, <laughs> see what people are saying. Okay, so that's French press. What's the next thing we're going to okay, do? Okay, so next we're going to be doing Chemex. Okay, and this is like a pretty cool method because it's and this is something that people probably recognize. I mean, it's in the Museum of Modern Art. This thing has been around forever. It's been around forever. Yeah. Um, the only downside to oh, so one of the nice things about French press is that you don't really need any like replaceable parts. There are no filters. Um, when you're done, you just take this. You throw out the grind and throw it in the dishwasher and then you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, for Chemex you need a filter. Right. And the thing about Chemex, I think, that I really like about it is it's actually a very thick filter. I mean you can like it's very thick. It's a lot it's a lot thicker than most like 60 filters. Um, it's substantial. Which means that the resulting coffee is going to be super, super fine. And this is a specific filter for the Chemex. You can't you can't use the number um, filter for whatever. No. Nah, yeah, you, you really need to if you want to get the Chemex result, you need to use the Chemex filter. Right. And um, the other thing about this filter is because it's so thick, it has a strong paper taste, so you have to really make sure you rinse it out with water before you start brewing your coffee. Okay. So, um, and that also helps start doing the that. filter adhere and stay in place, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. I mean, the, also the hot water is going to help to bring, you know, just the whole system to temperature. So right. there's no, like, crazy cooling. I mean, you can, you can smell the paper like, right now, so we'll just... Yes. You can, actually. Well, yeah. We might get rid of that. So you're doing two things, or three things. You're adhering, you're adhering that so that's not just falling straight out or right. moving around. You're getting rid of the paper taste, and you're also bringing the rest of the device to temperature so there's not a cold shock to the beans and to the water when it, when, it, when, it, when it comes through on the brew. Right. Which, honestly, the temperature thing isn't even that big of a deal right. um, because you kind of want the coffee to cool a little bit. The big thing is just getting rid of that, that paper taste. Right. 
it also helps the filter operate more efficiently if, um, if it's wet. OK, so for this one, we're also going to use 700 grams of water, right. but a lot less coffee and a slightly finer grind. OK. And so grind settings, you know, when you, when you get your bird grinder, I know that it varies by, by grinder and grind, really, but is there a guideline on that 0 to 40 scale? Or I mean, like, or do you use, um, like, the kosher salt versus... Um, you know, like actual tangible things that people can. I mean, at, at the at the end of the day, it's really just how it tastes. Um, right. You know, the nice thing about Chemex um, and French press is that you don't really need an expensive grinder to do it. More right. the the expensive grinders tend to be for espresso because for espresso you need like almost like kind of dust size, right? You no know, grind. Um, but for just home brewing, no. Yeah. Okay. So wait, how many how many how many grams are we doing for this? So this one's going to be we're going to do forty two. Okay. We're going to do 42 grams of beans to 700 grams of water. So I'm just going to put this on. Okay. And you want the grind to be slightly finer than French press, actually, like a bit finer. Right. Um, more like small breadcrumbs. Small breadcrumbs, OK. do, I don't think it's necessary, is um, I kind of take my finger and make a little divot in the middle just to kind of, so the water's going to kind of pull up there? Or yeah, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to pour in 700 grams of water um, over about four minutes, and we're going to do it in a counter counterclockwise motion, which I'm not sure if it's necessary or not, but because of the rotation of the earth, it tends to like facilitate how the water goes what? down. And, okay, all right. You know, and it's, almost, it's like a super So for our Australian so. viewers, they should be going <laughs> clockwise, is that what you're saying? Yeah, Technically, technically, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, great. This is fantastic. So um, because these beans are so fresh, I'm going to pour in um, 150 grams of water, let it sit for about 30 seconds just to let that gas escape. And that's called the bloom, right? Yeah. And that's actually, for me, it's like a, a test of how fresh the beans are because you can you can just, like, the more gas, the pressure. Yeah. You like how I throw out that kind of yeah, right. term. Yeah, I love that. Nice. Okay, so you're going to let this sit for 30 seconds, and you're going to do a second pour. And then I'm going to do a second okay. pour. And, um, I mean, you can see all this kind of gas is right. It it's, really is. It's like a the, bubble in geyser or something. It does, yeah. The recently active volcano of sorts, or there's something, something, hopefully not. Um, and so when I'm pouring the coffee in, you know, the goal is a total of four minutes for extraction. Okay. And you kind of want to avoid the light spots and hit the dark spots. Okay. So you get, um, and you're evenly sure. you're evenly distributing the water here. Trying to, you're, you're, you're doing no, you're doing a good job. Thank you. It's great. And um, the bed of coffee, you don't want it to rise too much because if you end up pouring the water in above the ground beds, the water will just kind of escape through the filter and it doesn't make contact with the beans. Yeah, and yeah. under extracted coffee, right? which you don't want. Oh. Under extracted sour, no. And so this this is slightly less forgiving. There's much more, le much less forgiving than still, French press. Um, less forgiving than French press. Sure. Um, still a bit more forgiving than a V60. The volume of water, just because it's like twice as much as we're going to do with the V60, helps it to be a little bit more forgiving. Right. Um, but it requires constant attention because you have this filter here. You have to constantly keep pouring it. Right. Um, you never want to let the bed of coffee dry out. Right. Um, so you you can't pour do the first pour and then come back, you might miss it by 30 seconds yeah. and then it's going to totally change the way yeah. the coffee tastes. Yeah, and the reason for that is that it just, there's too much of a temperature fluctuation and you don't want to let the coffee temperature like drop all the way down and then get exposed to air and you're re exposing it to hot water and it just it creates like a shock. But the other nice thing about Chemex is you kind of have this like nice little coffee Container, but yeah, it. so you can just bring it to the table, plop it down, and you know the brewing has stopped once it filters. Right, down. because unlike French press, the beans are not there's the grounds are not sitting in the bottom of right. the container. And um, you can also actually make great iced coffee with Chemex. And so what you can do is, you know, instead of if you need 700 grams of water, so we're using again 42 grams of beans to 700 grams of water. Yeah, you can take about a third of the weight of the 700 grams and put it in its ice right. bottom of the Chemex. 
so that as the water is passing through the filter, it'll cool down instantly and fret the ratios. Well, that's something that we were talking about before this about, you know, I think, you know, this is slightly off topic, but we were writing about this the other day on the website about, um, you know, cold brew coffee, which I think is sort of the, you know, the, the overnight 16 hour, you know, bean soak uh, that, that like every coffee shop seems to be doing. It's not the only way to make iced coffee, and in fact, it might not even be the best way to make iced coffee. Yeah, cold brew is a lot of fun, but I, I mean, I definitely think that there's this, this thinking that sort of like the longer the brew, the better it has to taste. Um, that's not necessarily true. Cold brew is great. I mean, I love New Orleans iced coffee. Um, but it has a very distinct oxidized kind of flavor, and some people like it, some people don't. I, I really like it. It's just it's just a bit different. Um, if you don't like, if you want a bit more acidity, um, less oxidized, you can just take like a V60 and drip it over ice. There are a few pretty like Japanese methods out there to do that. I think I understood about 30% of what you just said. So okay. Like, no, no, no. no. Yeah. Just no, I mean, it's good. No, I love it. Um, it's good. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I do. You were, you were comparing it to dry aging meat and how I think you know there is this like 120 days dry aged. Maybe that's actually not the best way to eat steak all the time. I mean, longer doesn't necessarily mean better. It does not necessarily mean better. So you've completed the four here, and we you completed the four straight out. Yeah. So okay. about another 30 seconds. Okay. It should be around four minutes. Okay. 30 seconds. Good. Um, and, and so, you know, when this is done, we're just going to remove. Yeah, and just toss it. Throw the beans up. Great. Yeah. Awesome. And then, so the flavor profile, and you know, what what the chemics is going to taste like compared to the French press. We're moving more towards that kind of lighter. I think acid. It's, yeah, there's going to be. Yeah, I think you're going to taste more of like the the red fruit notes in the mm -hmm. coffee um, because you're getting rid of that body. And we're using the same coffee for all same products. coffee. So yeah. we're doing a vertical tasting. We are doing a vertical tasting. <laughs> It's great. Let's see. And what are you making at home most often these days? Um, for methods. Yeah. Um, honestly, I prefer like French presses because it's so easy. Yeah. Um, I'll do V60 if it's like a coffee that I really want to try. And, right. And try to get. It. And if it's just for you, when we see V60, that 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 is a single. It's single. It's brew. a single brew method. So yeah. you know, Chemex and French press are a little bit nicer because they'll brew. Two to how many cups is the French press? Um, yeah, I mean the Chemex is usually two to three cups. French, French press, press um, two to three cups. Cool. But actually, they have like some giant French presses that I've seen. Yeah. I mean, some of them do like four to six cups. Yeah. Um, Crazy. But then again, technically one cup is like six ounces of coffee, which is like not nearly enough for me in the morning. Right. How, how many ounces of coffee do you need in the morning? Uh, too much. I mean, this is this is going to be about an eight to ten ounce right. class right there. So that's about right. That's that's technically right. two cups. That's right. That's like a. Just like a get out of bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is done. So I'm just going to pass the filter. So I guess I should say, if you're just joining us and wondering what the hell's going on here, I'm, with Adam. <laughs> I'm Matt Ducker, restaurant editor of Be Curious. We're doing a little coffee workshop today I'm with Adam Goldberg, uh, coffee social media food blogger extraordinaire from uh, a life worth eating. And right now we're we're making Chemex coffee. We made fresh press. We're making Chemex. We just poured it out. What are these? Is this heat? They are heat. Heat surrounds. Yeah, I love heat. I love heat. I love heat. I love heat. Anyway, so we're here. We're making coffee. We're going to do a Twitter chat starting at 2 p.m. If you have any questions, tweet. Yeah. yeah. Tweet <laughs> at, at Life Worth Eating, not a Life Worth Eating, at Life Worth Eating, and at Epicurious, and hashtag it Epicuriosity. And we'll be answering those questions at 2. Or at a moment. But anyway. States. All right, states. I mean, you can see, like, just looking at the two, I mean, it, it, it's a much like, it's a lighter. It's lighter, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And it looks, uh, you know, more clear. That's it. I don't normally taste side good. by side. Yeah, this is delicious. I, I think you extracted it just right. Mm -hmm. It's the Goldilocks of I hope so. extraction process. Um, yeah, I mean, you taste more of the red fruits. 100%. Like, cherries. Yeah. Yeah. Like the French press sort of hits you over the head, which is maybe great in the morning. Like to me, like this is just like a bolder, like stronger, you know. Um, I think if you add like milk and sugar to your coffee, French press tends to be the way to go because um, it equalizes. Down yeah, this is more body in there, so yep. you can know, support it can support milk. And sugar. It gives it more structure. Like, yeah. If you're just doing um, a filter <laughs> extraction, a lot of times this really is too fine for milk, and your coffee's going to taste more like milk than coffee. Right. Um, French press definitely can stand up to some. Where do you stand on? Milk and sugar in um, coffee. It depends. Like I like coffee both ways. Um, 
a lot of times I will add some milk or even cream to my coffee. Right. I kind of like how the fat binds to some of the more acidic coffees on a French press. Right. Um, but when I'm tasting, I'm not right, because you need to taste the coffee. So you would go over to Blue Bottle and order a, a coffee and put half and half in front of those guys? No, I would never yeah. do that. <laughs> I wouldn't I would have it in life. You get all sorts of basics. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that is true. All right. Um, but I mean, some coffees I think taste a bit better with milk. Like in New Orleans, has coffee is a great example. What, now, what is that? Like, that's something so that you've seen yeah. Blue Bottle. Blue Bottle, I think, has popularized it. Yeah. Right. It's from Cafe du Monde in uh, New Orleans. It existed before Blue Bottle made it popular? It's, 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 this stuff has been around for a while. Okay. I mean, it. it it's coffee, it has roasted chicory, um, and simple syrup. The coffee's infused with, it's, it's brewed with, with chicory. Exactly, right. yeah. Okay. Because during wartime, coffee was really expensive, and so they were using chicory as a substitute for okay. coffee. Um, tastes pretty different, but it's very bitter. Right. So you added simple syrup and milk to kind of balance everything out, and right. it's freaking amazing. It's delicious. Um, so that, that's Chemex. That's Chemex. Let's do some V60. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Now this is we're collecting like a, a wealth of heat ceramics over here. <laughs> this is great. We're moving into glass cups yeah. now. So. Okay. Cool. So um, so talk to me about about this. This is something I think the V60 people have probably seen something that looks like this, but there are actually a lot of pour over single brew method um, uh, devices that kind of look like a similar shape. You have some other ones up here. Yeah. This is really kind of like the classic one. I mean, there's also um, the V house, right? This is this is a Von Mac. Um, Von Mac, I'm sorry. And the difference really is like the V60 has a kind of like this wide hole at the right. bottom, um, so it's really the filter that's slowing down the dripping process. The Von Mac has like this one kind of hole punch at the bottom, right? right. So it's going to really slow down the drip. Um, blue Bottle uses the actually these are the Blue Bottle on there. Nice. Now V60, least forgiving. At least for most precise. If, if it's done right. I mean, a lot of times I'm hesitant to get V60 at a coffee shop. Right. I think it's like the volume that they do there, I'm not really sure if, you know, it, it can get risky. It's, uh, right. it's, it's, a, it's a high risk coffee rather than. Whoa, okay. All right. Yeah. So here we go, guys. Is this, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you have some safety guys. Right. 12, <laughs> 12.32pm, we are getting <laughs> crazy with V60. It's high risk. Okay. Do it. So seal this filter. This is about half the thickness of a Right. Okay. So it's uh, it's pretty fine, but it is going to let through a little bit more than the Chemex filter will. Right. Um, so it's going to it's going to happen for the whole thing to happen faster. Yeah. So this I think we're going to do about a three minute extraction okay. as opposed to four minutes. All right. And we're going to put in 27 grams of coffee to 360 grams of water. 27 grams to 360 grams. Of water. Yeah, it's a pretty good starting point. Okay. Um, all right. So of the of the all of the methods of coffee that we made so far, French press and Chemex, this is going to be the Finer grind. Okay. Um, nowhere near as fine as like a uh, espresso. Not dust fine. Not dust fine. I mean, maybe something like sand. Sand. Fine grain sand. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's figure this out. So we'll do twenty-seven grams. Just this. I like the Chemex. Yeah, me too. That's what I enjoy making at home too. We're wetting the filter here again, like we do with the Chemex. Yeah. Less to remove the paper taste now because it's not as strong. I mean, you can smell it. Like, do you smell paper as much? I mean, you smell a little bit, a little bit, not quite as much. You still want, you still want to do that. You still want to do that. Yeah. And it also, I mean, it heats up the ceramics. This kind of brings the whole system. And you could do this directly into the glass if you wanted it. The glass. Yeah, you, you can. Want to. I, I mean, for sharing, it's just much easier to do it in this fancy well, glass. Well, that's nice. That's nice. That's I always, nice. I always, <laughs> it's good. You always think about me. I love it. Um, okay, so we have the coffee uh, ground. We're going to put that in there. Yeah, great. Um, and the cool thing about V60, or really any of the methods, is because it's like a single cup method, you can test the coffee and you can actually make sure that you're doing everything correctly. Right. Um, so we have a refractometer that we okay. use. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is it, it's it's. I mean, there's all sorts of like nerd toys you can buy with coffee. No, okay. So so what is this? There is a purpose to using this. Yeah. Like, so you, you do this on Instagram and see so like using it, and it's like this I, is a thing that you actually use. And, yeah, I use I use it about once a week. Usually when I put a new variety of beans in my grinder, just to sort of make sure that I have all the variables right. But it right. tells you um, basically whether your extraction volumes, um, grind size are all correct. 
Um, it measures the total dissolved solids, it's basically right. the percentage of coffee that's actually in the water right, that comes through. And according to like the U.S. Gold Cup, there's like you know, there are very specific guidelines as to what those should be. Okay. So we're gonna. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna brew you a cup. Okay. And we're gonna try to get the numbers right. So I just want people to see what this thing looks like. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. It's like it's like a, somewhere between like a like a Garmin like GPS unit and a, I don't. Yeah. It looks like a camping like place a, or something, but. But this is what cell phones used to look like five years ago. <laughs> okay, pretty cool. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna use that. This is an optional part of the uh, experience. Uh, experience. It's, it's really optional. It's extremely it's optional. optional. It's really optional. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so we're gonna okay. So we bring coffee uh, the water back up to temperature. Yeah. So we want the water to be at um, probably about two oh two two oh three. And again, if you don't have an electric uh, kettle like this, you want to be taking. The water up to boiling on your stove and take it off for about 30 seconds. Yes, yeah. this is kind of general I mean, right. line for most people. Yeah, I think that's uh, generally pretty good. So we're going to put in um, total. We're doing 360 grams of water. So I'll put in about 60 grams. Let it sit, let the air escape, and then I'll, I'll slowly put in the rest. We're doing the bloom pour here again, so you let the gas. Yeah, I'm trying to. And you're actually going to see the most bloom, I think, with this one, just because it's um, it's a much smaller uh, surface area. Right. Top. How much heat ceramic stuff do you have? Um, really, just coffee stuff. I like to yeah. okay. went out to the uh, Blue Bottle in San Francisco. They have one in the heat ceramic shop. Right. Yes. Got in touch with them. And that's just some awesome oh, okay. ceramics. Okay. Cool. All right. That's a second pour now. How much? How much are we? So we're we're, we're bringing this up to 360. Okay. Uh, we're just going to do a real slow total extraction time about three minutes. Okay. And with the V60, it's like really important that the level of the coffee bed not rise. So, right. if, so you're just washing the cube. Yeah, and if, if the water starts to come above the level of coffee, you like slow down. Right. Um, so we're talking about every 10 to 15 seconds here? That's about right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, this drip actually looks a little bit fast, which means that the grind size should probably be a little finer. But we'll We'll test it out. Oh, we'll we will. Okay, great. But it'll still hopefully taste. It. Okay. And we might we might die. We'll, we'll see what we'll see what we'll see what we'll see what the VST. We're gonna have to make it again. Make it again? We might have to. Really? Well, I mean, it's just it's dripping pretty fast. Okay. Guys, hold on. Uh, <laughs> but, but just to be clear, hold on. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it's up. Bad extraction. It's right. just it could be better. But it just disappointed it, with it. it could, you know, it could always be better. Okay. How often does that happen where you get a bad extraction or a different extraction? Um, rarely. No, it's, it's it's pretty common. I mean, the cool this is that we're all in this industry. The cool thing about coffee is, I mean, there's really no such thing as well. Not actually, you can have bad extractions, but you know, you're, there's always variables that are changing. Um, how much acidity you're looking for, you know, how much viscosity, and um, you can just play around with the variables until you get something you like and you can try different things and right. Well, I guess it's valuable that even like a coffee expert like Adam can can have a moment where things you're not sure what's happening or, or what that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> happens a lot with coffee. With coffee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The rest of your life is wow. like, it's totally fine. But this is and we're we're going to be going into glass. Is there a reason why we're, we're yeah, going into glass? Yeah. I, I, I ran out of ceramic. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Good. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> How's that? For Super me? simple. <laughs> Or we could make up a reason why we're going to go to you know. Uh, yeah, because the temperature is uh, oh, okay, right, that's fine. There's a place um, I went to a coffee shop in Spain about two years ago that served coffee in like wine glasses. Mm. It was like strange. It was, it was it seemed a little They just ran out of heat ceramics. I think I think, yeah, I think yeah, that's what got happened. every time. Don't let them tell you different. <laughs> Give me some whole like explanation why you have to drink coffee out of a wine glass. Was it? I'm not, I'm not drinking coffee. Was it about aromatics? aromatics? It was about aromatics. Right. But I mean, like a paper cup is, is fine. Yeah. Actually, the extraction is pretty good. So okay. we're at three minutes, and right. we hit exactly 360 grams. Okay. So let's see how it tastes. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some into the cups for us. Okay. And we'll do a test just for fun to see with the refractometer to see like if the action the extraction. Okay. Works. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Right. 
Um, the refractometer. Yeah, so the thing with the refractometer is that really the coffee has to cool a lot. Okay. So we're going to just kind of put it in this little cup over here, let it okay. cool down, and then grate it. Give it a test. I've never seen this process before. I'm really excited. This would be fun. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing about pour over is that you can just kind of lock in the variables and then get it right every single time right. as long as you're not changing anything. Right. So if you have, you know, one grinder, one set of beans, you know, one temperature and one like timing. Right. You can lock in all the variables and it will always be a great cup, which is the case with most people, right? I mean, well, that's except for the refractometer. But, but I mean, you can get, get on Amazon, but it's how much does the refractometer go for? You can get cheap ones for about a hundred bucks. Okay. Um, but if there like, is there like a generic budget refractometer and then like the brand name? Yeah, I mean, is so the, like the, 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 old, Xerox, well, the, the old school ones, you actually have to like hold it up to the light because it's like, oh, there's like a prism inside. Cool. But the digital ones are a little bit more expensive. Cheers. 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 Did you cheers pop? Is that a thing that people oh, do? Oh, it is now. All right. Up curiosity. It smells like uh, caramel. Oh, wow. Great. And this is, Wait, again, this is the lightest. Great, so this is the lightest. So this is definitely the lightest. I mean, you can see the color. It, it almost looks like light cola or something. Yeah. It's and again, same beans we're using here. Same, same water, beans. same beans. Yeah. So let's, um, let's see what we got. All right, let's get crazy. Let's get crazy. <clears throat> okay, so you're taking a drop of coffee, putting it into the refractometer. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you have to really, like, take an alcohol pad and clean this down, which I did. All of, of course. So we're yeah. It's, I saw it's, it's good to go. Did do that. <laughs> um, one point five. Um, mean? It means it's going to be a little strong. Okay. Um, there's what are we looking for? So there's this really cool app that you download, and he has like a hundred notifications on his phone right now. By the way, yeah. like, well, oh my god, I think that this is actually a little nuts. Um, okay, so we open this up. Okay, and. This must be thrilling for people to watch also. That's on your phone. I like this. This is good. Okay. Fun. Oh, no, that. Uh, you know what? I just, I just updated it and it, it broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it just completely broken. But, uh, guys, hold on. I have, so what you, what you do is you take this number, you punch it into your iPhone, right, um, and it'll tell you the percentage extraction. And you're aiming between 18 to 22%. OK. Um, I can tell you just because I've done this a bunch. Like, if this says 1.5, it's going to be about 21%. So okay. it's, it's a strong cover up. OK. Well, I know what I'm getting my own for Christmas. <laughs> you know, this, is, this is great. Um, we'll have to uh, come back in this future. But that, that's not right. That's fine. No problem. So, of the three methods, what do you what do you like? I mean, we can we can, we can do a tasting now. Let's so, okay. We can, we can compare all three. Let's refract time around the way. Yeah. So now um, these two have cooled. So right. So they're going to be at or slightly below optimal drinking. Actually, this is like a pretty good drinking temperature. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're all so different. I'm partial to the ones in the ceramic cups because they look the, the cups best. always make it better. I, mean, I don't know. I think that's what you were doing. But, um, I mean, I think I think the V60 is, is wonderful. I mean, that's how I like to drink my coffee. Yeah. Really light, super bright, super acidic. Um, the beans are great, like you said, which helps. But um, this is what I like doing at home, and it's also you know single single service. So I think the French press can be, I guess if you have one that's the right size, it's fine. But like right. if you're if you're solo, like typically if you're so not going to be. They actually have a oh, mini French press. I'm sorry. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, just kidding. Uh, wow, amazing. Yeah. So this is, you can you can get it you can get it pretty small. Wow, it's adorable. It's it's kind of cute. Yeah, it's really cute. What is this? Four cups? Okay. Um, I can probably get about 320 grams of water in there. This is one cup. But one, 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 one it's, uh, it's for solo use. And this is that is uh, three to four cups. Okay, three to four cups. Okay. Yeah. But uh, this is going to be like a small cup. I mean, it'll barely reach the top of there. Right. This is not good enough for you in the morning. No, it's yeah, not. This, yeah. this, this isn't is, going to work. This is not going to work. But what I would do is, I mean, for French press, like a good starting point is you know one to ten of ratio of beans to water. So I'd probably cut that down to like maybe thirty grams of coffee, right. three hundred grams of water, or something like this. Right. Well, there's a Same lot time. to digest here. We're going to do a blog, blog post. On yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll post these recipes too. So amazing. So we're going to post that on Epicurious sometime this week. Um, Adam, thank you so much. Yeah, no, uh, this is, this is, this is like, I'm like over caffeinated, really hyped up. 
Um, again, you know, Adam Goldberg, Life Worth Eating, is going to be on Twitter taking over the Ad Epicurious account starting at 2 o'clock, answering all of your questions. Um, so please tweet at Epicurious and at Life Worth Eating with the hashtag Epicuriosity, which I don't even know if I can spell off the top of my head. But yeah, it's on, all the information is on the site. We'll, we'll tweet it out. We'll tweet it out. Look it up. We'll see you on Twitter. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. Awesome. Let's drink some coffee. All right. Let's drink all this <laughs> coffee. All right. Uh, okay. Where to start?